It's my great honor and pleasure uh, here to talk about my study on chimpanzees. Um, the outline of talk today, uh, I will give you the introduction first, and then it is followed by four topics. Imitation, language, supine posture, means lying on the back, and imagination. And if I have an extra time, I will mention about the conservation of chimpanzees. First, as an introduction, uh, I want to mention Japanese monkeys. Not many people recognize that Japan is a special country in terms of the study of monkeys and apes, because there are no German monkey, no French monkey, no British monkey, no American monkey. So no monkeys and apes in North America and in Europe. So among G7 countries or summit countries or advanced countries, Japan is only one exception that has indigenous native monkeys. And even more, Japan is located to the north, so there are about 300 species in primates, except humans. Um, Japanese monkeys is the northern limit of the habitats. Japanese monkeys, and uh, when you are talking about the culture, uh, sweet potato washing in Koshima monkeys is a good example. Uh, sweet potatoes were given to the monkeys and monkeys started to wash the sweet potato. Um, it was in 1953, so more than uh, 60 years ago, uh, a monkey started to wash and that is transmitted from one generation to the next. Please look at monkeys washing potatoes in the sea. This behavior started in the water, fresh water, but now generation by generation, um, monkeys started to wash in the sea to take the salty taste. It's in Koshima, but in Shiga Heights, uh, there is another uh, habit, mm. hot bathing, uh, bathing in hot spring. That is in Shiga Heights, but in a different place, now you can see a very unique behavior called extra large cluster. <laughs> that is in Shodoshima only. So the monkeys jump into the cluster to keep warm. So every place, each community of uh, monkeys, they have different habit, habit. And in Yakushima, the southern part of Japan, there are not only monkeys, but also deer, called shika deer in Japan. Monkey and deer, monkey, deer, and the monkey Riding on the deer. <laughs> Riding on the deer. Okay? So this is no training. This is really natural wild. But monkeys, if there is an opportunity to ride on, riding on the deer. So in sum, what I wanted to talk to is uh, even in Japanese monkeys, Every different place has its own double quote, culture. But because of the cold climate or availability of hot spring or the sea, so all culture depends on the availability of the resource, like shika deer. Suppose that no shika deer, no riding. No hot spring, no hot spring basin. 
So that is the reality of Japanese monkeys' culture. So environmental constraints are there. So what is uniquely human? My first major at the university, my major was philosophy. So I came from philosophy, and the question is, what is uniquely human? Where did we come from? Then, only one take-home message today is family hominid consists of four genera, orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, and humans. So family <coughs> human consists of not only human, but also chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. By the way, chimpanzee has two different species called chimpanzees and bonobos. But to let you get the idea, I want to show the image of orangutan. This is orangutan. This is gorilla. Orangutan. Gorilla. Orangutan. mother and infant, very cute. Yeah? Orangutan in Sumatra and Borneo, Indonesia and Malaysia, and gorilla in Africa, chimpanzees in Africa, bonobos in Africa, we humans from Africa. Yeah? So among uh, family hominid, orangutan is a bit far from humans. Gorillas and chimpanzees and, and humans came from Africa. And bonobo, not many people see bonobos, so I want to show you bonobos. I went to Congo Zaire to see wild bonobos. The voice is very unique. So my study of chimpanzees is a bit unique because I have been doing my parallel effort of field work and laboratory work. Not only field work, but also laboratory work. I do both. But if you think about the previous studies, field work means observation. And laboratory work means experiment. But in the two by two contingency table, you may do field experiment in the field. You may do participant observation, careful observation in the laboratory. So two by two contingency table, uh, both field work and laboratory work, both observation and experiment combined together synthesize all different approaches to know the chimpanzees. That is my unique way. <coughs> so let me introduce laboratory experiment called AI project, uh, started in April 1978. So that is seven years ago. Um, AI is my research partner, female chimpanzee. Uh, spelled A-I and I, um, and very popular girl name, girl name in Japan. And I is uh, the chimpanzee who learned to use um, various visual symbols, like letters of alphabets, Arabic numerals, and uh, geometric figures. And it's in the Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University. <coughs> and since 1968, uh, the institute started only one chimpanzee. A decade later, a chimpanzee arrived in 1978. Since then, I have been uh, making the effort 
of simulating a group of chimpanzee, community of chimpanzee. So now we have 13 chimpanzee as a group uh, in the Primate Research Institute. 13 chimpanzee of three genera generation, grandparents, parents, and offsprings. You can see a tiny chimpanzee uh, on the top of the 15 meters high climbing frames, like this. So I just want to show you the video clip to see what's going on. <coughs> 15 meters high climbing frames with a lot of vegetation. This outdoor compound is attached to the indoor, a huge cage. And you can see from the chimpanzee viewpoint, you can see one, two, three, four booths for the computer task. So anytime, whenever they want, they can come to the booth for cognitive experiment. So the cognitive experiment is fully automated for the computer task. And chimpanzee face to the computer to touch the Arabic numeral. And if it is correct answer, the automated dispenser gives a tiny piece of paper. Uh, whenever she wants, uh, she can leave the place. <coughs> and the next uh, chimpanzee will come. <coughs> so to identify the, uh, the chimpanzee, we use a video camera to recognize the face to know uh, automated uh, face recognition system, we know which chimpanzee are uh, occupying their apparatus to give the right task for the right individual. So self-motivated learning system. <coughs> Let me proceed to two by two contingency table, what we name participant observation in the laboratory, but we do the, the observation, the full observation. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Very <coughs> classic way of comparing two species. Um, this is 100 years in the West, in Europe and in America. Uh, the Western uh, scholars try to compare human and chimpanzee in this kind of situation. Uh, environment is the same. But human baby start to speak, but chimpanzee baby doesn't start speaking. So um, speech is innate, uh, uniquely human. So that is uh, the logic of this kind of study. But when I have an opportunity <coughs> uh, to raise a baby chimpanzee that was abandoned by the mother, I was forced to raise the baby chimpanzee at home with my daughter. <laughs> then I recognized this kind of Western way of comparing two species is not good because my daughter has the parents, but the chimpanzee baby has no parents at all. The chimpanzee baby is isolated from the mother and forced to adapt to human environment. So it's not fair to compare the two species like this. If you isolate the baby chimpanzee from the mother, the baby looks depressive. <coughs> so, uh, when my research partner, Ai Chimpanzee, gave the birth to her son named Ayumu, Ayumu means walk, uh, in 2000, 
as you see, placenta and cord, so this is right after the birth. I was in the same room to take the photo, and I determined to change the paradigm. Not the Western way, but Japanese way. The baby should be with the mother. The baby should not be isolated from the mother. So, baby and the mother always together. But thanks to the long-term friendship between the researcher and the mother, I can ask the mother to let me test your baby. So this is the paradigm we created and named <coughs> participant observation. I participate, I joined, I engage in the uh, life of mother and infant. 2000 started. 2005, Ayumu five years old. 2009, Ayumu nine years old. 2012, 2014. <laughs> By the way, my hair was black. <laughs> Getting gray and white. Not only me, I, Ayumu. Uh, but also my colleague and Chloe and Cleo, my colleague and Pan and Paul. So three trios in this paradigm. And as you see, exactly the same situation we succeeded to create. Me, mother and child in humans. Me, mother and child in chimpanzees. Uh, even more, in this direct uh, way of participant observation, I can give the shot to the full adult big male. So we published uh, journal articles and assembled it into the two books, Primate Origins of Human Cognition and Behavior and Cognitive Development in Chimpanzees both from Springer. I think it's a German publisher. <laughs> and in the field, first, field observation, very traditional, classic way, just follow the chimpanzee from the morning till the evening. The research site is called BOSU, B-O-S-S-O-U, uh, that is in the country Guinea, Conakry. This is Africa, and you may see Bosu um, close to Tai, uh, where Christoph Bosch of Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology has been working with the wild chimpanzees there. So we are the neighbors. So in Bosu, <coughs> we have Kyoto University Primate Research Institute and also Guinean Institute of Environmental Research at BOSU. So we collaborate together. In BOSU NIMBA, that is designated UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. So since 1986, every year, December, January, in the dry season, I go to BOSU to see the wild chimpanzees. And <coughs> I created a new way of approaching chimpanzee mind in the wild uh, called field experiment. So doing the experiment in the outdoor laboratory. It looks natural, but that this is outdoor laboratory. Why? <coughs> because if you step one step, two steps, three steps, back, it's like this. So behind the glass fence, you are facing to the outdoor laboratory. Behind the glass fence, and you can see the chimpanzees. It's like a theater. So chimpanzees come to the theater to show their behavior in front of the video cameras. <coughs> Chimpanzee of Bosu is known to use stone tool. So lithic technology, 
using stones to crack open oil palm nuts, hard shell nut. Uh, to get the kernel, you have to crack open the hard shell using two mobile stones, hammer and anvil. So I want to show the video clip. So this is a female, middle-aged female, the lady chimpanzee, pick up a seed, hard shell seed of the oil palm, place it on the anvil stone and clack, 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 hit, hit, hit to get the kernel, edible part, in it. By the way, she is left-hander. She always uses left hand for the hammering. Then, again, we published journal articles and assembled into the book titled The Chimpanzees of Bosu and Nimba. Uh, by the way, the number of chimpanzees is decreasing in Bosu community. We are very much worried about it. Even more, last year to this year, there was an Ebola outbreak started in Guinea Conakry, only 100 kilometers from Bosu. Um, very happily, so far, not yet alive to Bosu, so no patients of Ebola. But as you see, Ebola, number of patients increase and number of deaths is increasing too. So almost 60 to 70 percent of patients die because of Ebola. Okay, let me proceed to the topics. Uh, four topics, but the first one is imitation. What is uniquely human? Um, General imitation, imitation. We are very good at imitation, but apes do not ape. Chimpanzees, it's not so easy for chimpanzee to make the copy of the others. Um, in the case of stone tool, the first success is about four to five years old. Four years, five years old can start uh, cracking open nuts, <coughs> but the children, like zero, one to three years old, they cannot open, crack open the nuts by stones. So I want to show you the video clip of three and a half years old, baby chimpanzee. Not yet succeed, okay? Sound of the forest. Place a nut and try to hit. It doesn't work. Hold, hit, hit, and kick, kick, kick. <laughs> Try again. <coughs> One nut. And the second nut. It's a superstition. Two nuts. And hit it and hold it up and slow. Slow the stone. It's the same chimpanzee but a different uh, different time. Oops, sorry. Doesn't work. Okay. Um, what I want to label the behavior is education by master apprenticeship. Uh, no active teaching and intrinsic motivation of making the copy and the high tolerance of mother and adults. So education by master apprenticeship. No active teaching from the adults. But the, the infant, the child, has intrinsic motivation to make a copy. And adults, again, show the high tolerance towards the children. 
Uh, let me proceed to the second topic, language. Of course, what is uniquely human? The answer is language. Language is uniquely human. So I try to teach language-like skills to the chimpanzee eye. But to make the long story short, today I want to focus on the numbers, uh, integers, the numbers, numerical skills. Chimpanzee learn to, to learn the number from one through nine and can double quote count the number of white dots uh, on the screen. One, one dot, six, seven, three, two, yeah. So chimpanzee can count the number of items. Uh, to touch the corresponding numeral. Then uh, Ayumu, the son, and three kids. Uh, I thought to touch one through nine. So any trial is unique. After I touch white circle, nine numerals appear. And what you have to do is to touch the numerals in ascending order from one to nine. Here. So this is four and a half years old. So very quick and easy for the chimpanzee kid. So based on this knowledge of touching numeral from one through nine, I introduced the memory task. Chimpanzee has to remember which number appeared in which position of the monitor. So the task is the same as the previous one. Touch the white circle, nine numerals appear. But after touch one, the other numerals turn to be white rectangles. Then you have to touch two, three, four, Five were there. Okay, you try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't worry, you cannot do it. <laughs> I know. Humans cannot do it. In 0.5 seconds, chimpanzee touches the first number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah? So we found that, well, only single task, but chimpanzee can be better than humans. So human is not the creature who dominate, who is a superior to the other creatures. Um, but not many people, is, especially the people in the West, are not so happy to see chimpanzees better than humans. <laughs> so many um, controversies occurs. So I <coughs> introduce the extreme case. Uh, here, chimpanzee touch one through nine, but two numerals are missing. You see? Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So four and nine are missing. One, three, four, five. So two numerals are missing. Only seven numerals. And it's random. But still, chimpanzee can do it, okay? So this is not the memory, just the ascending order of seven numerals. But 
Now I introduce seven numerals in very brief duration. 0 0.2 second. 0 0.2. And then gone. So very briefly I present. And chimpanzee are tested whether uh, he can, she can remember the numerals. So, okay. I cannot explain. I cannot see. But he can see the seven numerals. One, two, something. Let's turn. Oops, difficult. One, three, I don't know. One, two, I don't know. I tested my students, <laughs> Kyoto University students, one of the best universities in Japan, many Nobel Prize winners, but their performance accuracy is zero percent. <laughs> so it is not the matter of training. Yeah? Then one day, seven numerals, he can do it. But that is very difficult task even for him, so he needs concentration. <laughs> he completely lost his attention. <laughs> but 10 seconds later, he can do it. <laughs> So, not only the immediate memory, but also the memory continues at least for 10, ten seconds. So, uh, in conclusion, chimpanzee is very, very good at this kind of immediate memory. And I.e. chimpanzee and the uh, children too, they learn to use Japanese letter. The letter for the color name, white, Green, brown is this letter. So color to the letter. Japanese, Chinese letter. Orange, yellow, yeah. and the reverse. Pink for you, I decode the letter brown. Red. Green. Gray. So, in human language, color red corresponds to the letter, or what we call lexigram, visual symbols, so it's equivalent. But amazingly, it was difficult for chimpanzee. Yes, it is possible to teach them to use the letters, but for example, if I teach color red, it should go to the letter red. Color blue goes to the letter blue. Color green goes to the letter green. But one day, suddenly you switch. What is this letter? Red. Which color? Red, green, blue, what? And it was very difficult for chimpanzee. So for humans, it's almost automatic. Once you teach color red goes to letter red, letter red goes to color red. But it was not automatic in chimpanzees. So, <clears throat> my hypothesis. We share the common 
ancestor about five million years ago. So chimpanzees and humans were the same creature. Then chimpanzee uh, lineage go to the chimpanzee and human lineage go to humans. And in the course of human evolution, we lost chimpanzee-like immediate memory capability. But in return, we acquire the language to symbolize this world. Okay, let me go to the third topic. Stable supine posture makes us human. Many of you may think it must be bipedal upright posture and locomotion that should be the primary force of human evolution. I don't deny that bipedal upright posture and locomotion is uniquely human, but what Matsuzawa tells you is stable supine posture is more important. Let's see Japanese monkeys walking quadipedally. Please imagine, how do they stop? Like cows, horses, to stop? No. When they stop, it's like sitting on the two legs. So walking and sitting. So already in this posture of sitting, Body trunk, uh, body trunk is upright. Why? Because of climbing trees, arboreal life. Climbing trees, you, your body should be upright. So all primates, the feature is climbing trees. Look at the footprint on the sand. As you see the foot, look like hands for humans. So four hands, not only the hands, but also the foot, two feet, uh, look like hands. So primates means four hands animals. Why? Because of arboreal life. The life in the, the trees. So chimpanzee foot look like hand. Yeah? Monkey, chimpanzee. Monkey, chimpanzee. It's the same. And when I had an opportunity to put the baby chimpanzee on the back, I saw very strange behavior of one arm and the contralateral <coughs> uh, foot were lifted up. So right arm, left leg. Then five, six seconds later, left arm and right leg. So it's alternated. When I see orangutan baby putting on the back, exactly the same. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. Orangutan? Chimpanzee. Orangutan, chimpanzee. It's the same. Why? Because the baby wanted to clean the mother. So that is so simple, clear fact. What is uniquely human? Mother and infant is separated. Not many people are aware of this kind of simple fact. Human mother and the infant is separated, physically separated right from the birth. And the baby can take the stable supine posture, not struggling like this. So evolutionary basis of mother-infant relationship, humans are unique because of stable supine posture, lying on the back, stable. Stable supine posture, why that is important? <coughs> because of the physical separation that enabled us to face-to-face -face communication and vocal exchange. 
not many people recognize that only human babies cry, cry, cry in the night. As you know, your babies cry a lot in the night to get milk. But chimpanzee baby never cry in the night because no, it's not necessary to cry because mother is always there. If you feel hungry, you try to get the nipple, to get the milk. And <coughs> important point, the hands are free from the beginning. Right after the birth, human babies, hands are free because the body is supported by the back. It's not a quadrupedal animal standing up and now hands free. No, it's completely wrong. Primates means four hands animals. That is the common feature of primates. And when the primate getting down to the ground to start walking, now humans invented feet, two feet are uh, from four hands. So the hands are free for manual gesture. Hands are free for object manipulation. And that object tend to become tools. So, <clears throat> somehow related to the stable supine posture, I want to talk about invention of the grandmother. Grandmother is uniquely in humans. In the case of chimpanzee, uh, this graph shows x-axis is 0 to 4 years old, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years old. So chimpanzee survived for 50 years. Dashed line shows a survivorship. And the solid line uh, shows the reproduction, how many kids um, you give the birth. So they started to give the birth in teenagers, 20s, 30s, even 40s, they give the birth up until the end of 50 years. So in the case of chimpanzee, <coughs> very old female chimpanzee, but they are not grandmother. Very old lady, but not the grandmother. They try to reproduce their offspring up until the end. Only humans invented grandmother, who take care of child's child, children's children, so grandchildren. So, a human is unique because of the collaboration among mother and father and grandmother, grandfather. So multiple adults collaborate together <coughs> to raise many children at one time. In the case of chimpanzee, uh, because of <coughs> 0 0.2 chimpanzee births per female per year means Every year, one single female gives the birth 0 0.2 baby. Means one baby, it takes five years. So, in, so interbirth interval is five years. <coughs> so humans have the siblings two, three years difference. Two, three years uh, elder brother or two, three years younger sister. That is human community, human nature. But it's not in chimpanzees. In the case of chimpanzee, at least five years difference. <coughs> so, uh, to conclude my talk, let me talk about imagination. What is uniquely human? Uh, the shortest answer for me is imagination. To talk about imagination, uh, because of this a uh, unique exhibition of ape culture. Uh, I brought the case of drawing, art, chimpanzee art. <laughs> chimpanzee love to draw without any food reward. No reward at all, but chimpanzee love to draw, uh, draw. chimpanzee drawing.
chimpanzee drawing. Chimpanzee drawing. It's a drawing by different chimpanzee. Are you chimpanzee? Chloe. I. Chloe. And Pan. So every chimpanzee has different taste. <laughs> this is a masterpiece of mine. <laughs> Red and black. I <laughs> chimpanzee draw the painting <coughs> and I send this picture as a gift to Coco Gorilla. <laughs> You see? That one is this one. Yeah? I, chimpanzee, sends a message to the Coco Gorilla. And as you, as you know, Coco Gorilla is also paint. Back to I. The same story about <coughs> Washu. Washu chimpanzee by Roger Fouts. I gave the painting and they gave us the painting. And Bonobo Kanzi. So important point is Bonobo Kanzi, Washu Chimpanzee, Coco Gorilla, and Ai Chimpanzee, the same. So there are no apes to draw circle when the apple is uh, presented. When apple presented, prefer to use red? No. Prefer to draw circle? No. So, no concrete drawing. It looks very abstract one. But still, it seems to be a, an art. So, <clears throat> we organized an exhibition called Arts and Apes. So, Arts and Apes held in 2008 in Japan. And so our ex exhibition, all painted by the great apes, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas, and orangutans. And we welcome Jane Goodall to see the paintings. Okay? The point is all uh, ape drawing. And even more, we did introduce the puppet show. <laughs> As you may know, like Kabuki and No, uh, we have Unlak, a Japanese traditional puppet show. So we did the puppet show and drawing to make an art exhibition of the great apes, arts and apes. <coughs> if you show the picture of, of chimpanzee to the uh, chimpanzee subject and free drawing, they love to draw the face. So it's free, but they love to draw the face. If you show the phot photograph of face only, they love to draw eyes and mouth. Face, eyes and mouth. When I show the child children's book of me, I chimpanzee looking at the castle on the hill. Now I chimpanzee draw me Matsuzawa and I chimpanzee and the castle. So it's very clear what they see is what we see. Suppose that there is a black thin circle drawn on the white paper. Chimpanzee love to draw the contour of the circle. Then one of my graduate student, very bright student, got an idea to test the sketch of the chimpanzee face. Full face, but the next one, right eye missing, left eye missing, both eyes missing. Well, only face contour, eyes and nose and mouth are missing. And it's free to the chimpanzee subject how to draw. It's free how to draw. 
and the result is voila. Chimpanzee love to draw the facial contour. No chimpanzee drew anything in the blank space. This is human. <laughs> human child, more than three years old. Chimpanzee, human. Completely different. I tested seven chimpanzees, but no one ever write in something <coughs> in the face. But humans have drawing something to say, oh, eyes are missing. The child say, oh, nose are missing, mouth are missing, and they draw the uh, things into the face, blank space. So this is the data. So this is the real data. And my interpretation, chimps are looking at what is present. And we humans thinking about what is absent, what is missing. So starting from what are there, humans thinking about something outside of the present context. This reminds me of the case of Rio, the name of chimpanzee, a 24 years old male chimpanzee, suddenly got sick in 2006. So under the neck, completely paralyzed, it's acute spinal cord uh, inflammation. And cannot move, so very severe bed sore. So hip, knee, elbow, the skins are broken, and the blood. So if I were this chimpanzee, I may think, oh, I think I become depressive. But very interestingly, this chimpanzee does not become depressive. Above neck, the head is intact, so he can uh, drink the water through the stool. But keep the water in the mouth and spit to the caretaker. <laughs> and the caretaker frightened. <laughs> and uh, a chimpanzee showed very happy face. <laughs> when he was health, healthy, he was like that. But he was on the bed, he continued to be this way. Thanks to the God, he gradually recovered from the illness. And also the young caretakers tried to extend the flexed arms and uh, legs so rehabilitation, or even more, cognitive test helps him. So this is the apparatus um, in which chimpanzee to get the food treat, he has to walk three meters back to the computer monitor and touch the monitor and succeed to get the reward, but three meters back to the food tray. So to get one foot, he has to walk six meters. So 100 trials, so 600 meters. In the morning and in the afternoon. So every day he has to walk 1.2 kilometers. 10 days, 12 kilometers. 100 days, 120 kilometers. Uh, that help him to recover. Okay, uh, let me conclude. What is uniquely human? Imagination. Uh, mental time travel and the mental space travel, the range is different. So mental time. So uh, we can think about the future. <coughs> Even after the death, we humans can think about the past. Even before the birth, we can be sympathetic the people who are in trouble in Nepal, in Kathmandu, because of the earthquake. That is uniquely human. Chimpanzees mainly live in the world of here and now. 
only here and now, so they seem not to be anxious about their future. Or even tomorrow, they do not be anxious about, worried about the uh, future. So chimpanzees do not become desperate because they are living in the world here and now. Here and now. But humans sometimes become desperate. Easily become desperate. However, because of the power of their imagination, even though the current situation is so miserable, so depressive, still we can have a hope. So, because of the imagination, humans can have hope. So that is what I learned from the study of chimpanzees in the laboratory and in the wild. Thank you for your attention. Okay.